Right, so this is the unit about networks and looking at the different aspects of networks. Now, when we talk about networks, the most common one is one in school, uh, which tend to be most useful. And there are loads and loads of benefits to look to hooking up networks together. There's things like um, sharing resources. Um, move it, you can move move about more, you can, um, it's um, better for things like backup, there are loads and loads of reasons, and if you think about all the different things that you can do on the school networks, then you tend to be very, very good at, um, at identifying these things, and that's a typical exam question, so things like sharing the resources, you could be, it's installing software as well, um, because, um, if you imagine that the technicians upstairs can install all the software at the press of a button. Um, we can share printers and obviously you've got things like drives so you can share drives which means obviously then you can um, share data a lot more easily. Right, now we've talked about things, we have to talk about networks at home and at school. Most networks run on something called a LAN. Now LAN stands for Local Area Network. Now when we think about that, obviously it does what it says on the tin. It allows things in the local area to connect together in the device. Um, all devices in your house connect to a central hub which is also known as a router or switch okay and we call them and that's how we put networks together now you need certain things to set up a local network you need some kind of router or switch in the middle and then we can use other things and connect other devices through this router or switch. You'll need, in every PC, you need a network card. I'll put NC there. Now a network card obviously will be... a network card is needed. Now when you think about laptops, laptops already have them installed. But you still have to have some kind of wireless network card or some kind of card that allows you to connect to the internet. In the deep dark, it uh, connects to the rest of the network. In the deep dark days, you used to have to buy these extra, but now you get them. Now you get them as built in. Um, you could, in your house, you could have a server. Now a server is a central machine of data or a central store of data, and it manages. The network. Um, you could have the router. Now, in order to connect all these things, this is the router, obviously, which is important. And the last thing you need is um, something to connect all the devices together. Now, if your hub is obviously wireless, there you go, there's my little antenna there, a wonderful drone, um, that radiates with a wireless signal. But sometimes to connect them together, you need something called, you need some cable, which is otherwise known as MD5. MD5 cable. And that's another thing that you need to set up a home network. Now, when we talk about a local, that's a local area network. So all this stuff, before going to the internet, is part of the local area network. Now, when we talk about a wide area network, otherwise known as a WAN, we start to then talk about the internet. So you have a little local area network, that's your house, you know, there's, and there's your LAN, and from your LAN you connect to the internet or your internet service provider. So I'll put a little box in there and I'm going to call that ISP. And that then takes you on 
to the internet. And the internet is basically a set of connected computers or computer networks. All these LANs join together, create one massive network, and it's called a wide area network. Now, the next step, when we hook up networks, in the old days, there were three main configurations of network. There were different types and different ways we could set up networks. There was a bus network, there was a ring network, and there was a star network. We're most used to this one nowadays, so this is the one we'll come to at the end. Now, a bus network works like this. If you imagine, a bus goes from point A to point B. Well, what we did was, we put a load of stops along our network, and we'd have a load of PCs. And then what we do, and they would sh they would be your stops along the network. And at the very end, you would have your big bad server, which would actually look after them all. The downside of this was, of course, that if there was ever a break in the main connection, say here, you were completely disconnected from the network. It was fairly easy to fix the problems, but, so it's easy to fix... I'm cheap to set up because we require not much cabling but really it's not the most efficient and if I wanted to send a message I had to send a message all the way along the bus line all the way up to here and then send it all the way back now the problem is this if everybody's doing this all at once you could end up with a lot of interference on the line so you have to be very careful the other way was a ring network now a ring is well it is what it says on the tin you have a load of PCs uh, there you go, there's my PC. I'm only doing it with three, and I'll put my server in the middle. And then what we have is we have a ring network. Now, ring networks obviously took a little bit more cabling, because what we're doing, we've still got our three PCs, but obviously we have to have enough cabling to go all the way around. Now, this was a, the idea of this was, was that, well, if I get a break in the, in the line, then all it would do is it goes, oh, I've got a break here. So it'd send a message and it'd say, oh, I've got a break here. Oh, no, I can't send the message. So I'll just send it the other way. And that's what it used to do. And ring networks were really, really useful for that. But they were more expensive. Um, and they were, they were made by the company IBM. So they were called IBM rings. And they were passing, and they were passing those messages around the network. Now, the last is the one that we use most commonly today which is a star network, which is where you have a server in the central point, and then out of that server, every PC is connected to it, which is exactly how every home and every school network works now. Because if this breaks, as you can imagine, you know, there's all my diagrams, I'm running out of space, but if this breaks, then only one computer is affected. Now, obviously, you can't have a direct connection to a server. So what we do is we use, instead of you drawing all these lines to the server, what we use, I'm going to, have to delete these, I'm going to make a mess of this. What we use is we use a hub or a switch. And that hub then connects all the PCs from there together. But if there is a break, it tends to be fairly easy to to fix it, and it only affects one machine at a time. Imagine if you break, if you made a break on this one, it affects all the PCs, and if you make a break on this one, well, this one's quite expensive to set up. Um, but if you make a break on this one, then if it's in an important place, or if you have a couple of breaks, then you're absolutely stuffed. So, because you're cut, you're, you're cutting off the whole network. Now, what you have to do is for the exam is you have to know what the three what the three main topologies are, there you go, through bus, bus ring and star, if you can remember those and the kit that you need to make sure that you set it up, so we'll be talking about the server, the hub, the cable, the network cards, the router and, or the router and the switch, and what a server is, which is the central store of everything and the managing of all the network, is what the server does, then that that is the important bit. Remember that a hub can take more than one PC to it, 
and of course you can do wireless hubs as well which is attaches to things like your laptops and you know, there's my laptop and my uh, your laptops and your iPads so if you've got one of those um, remember the terms LAN and WAN and what they t what they all stand for because they're typical exam questions okay that's the first lesson in the networking